Hi. Some people on the EV blog forum have been talking about um, the uh, leak, potential leakage current at high voltage in the new BM2257 uh, multimeter with the uh, MOV configuration that I just uh, released a video uh, this morning on the uh, main channel. So this is the input configuration here. And in uh, voltage mode, we're basically using this path here. And we've got three MOVs in series like this. So these are a CNR brand Verista or uh, MOV as they're called, metal oxide varista that's what it stands for uh, there are 5d 621k so there's two of those in series that means they're normally 620 volt uh, rated each and then there's, then there's another one which is a 561 and the one in there just means one like an, a one zero in there so it's 560 so 560 volts so we've got a total nominal clamping voltage of 1800 volts there so in theory right not in practice but in theory uh, these should should start to conduct at uh, 1800 volts. So obviously this is way over the uh, 1000 volt uh, rating of uh, the meter. In fact, well, this is only 600 volt uh, Cat3 rated, but it measures up to uh, 1000 volts. In fact, it can go over that. I've actually done a video uh, measuring that. I can link that in. And of course, these won't have like a really sharp um, instant uh, turn on. It doesn't uh, actually work like that. But uh, normally they're designed to, of course, protect the um, input circuitry of your meter over here from any uh, you know high voltage transients. So that's what all the uh, UL testing is designed to do. They put input transients on the input here, um, very, um, you know, various like half waveforms and stuff like that. Really, you know, big peak energy stuff in there uh, to see if the uh, MOVs can actually uh, survive that. Well, and the meter can actually survive that overload protection. But these MOVs, these are going to have a leakage current through them. So you know, we've got our nominal 10 mega ohm input impedance there. So what happens to our nominal 10 mega ohm input impedance at say a thousand volts. Well, it's interesting, so let's measure it. So you can actually get this entirely from the data sheet, and this is the post by uh, Flubby Dust. I'll link in the uh, data sheet down below for these uh, CNR brand uh, MOVs. It has these characteristic curves in here, which is basically uh, voltage versus uh, current down here. And this is, uh, they've uh, split it down here, you can see this is uh, when it's at max clamping voltage. So this is how much current um, it'll actually uh, clamp through. And over here is what we're interested in. This is the leakage current. Now, because as I said, we have them in series like this. If we put a thousand volts here, uh, we're pretty much going to have an even voltage split across here. We're not 100% sure, but let's just assume it's an even voltage split across here. So 333 volts per uh, MOV here. So if we go to our leakage current graph here, these are the characteristic curves for the different models. So we're looking at the third one down, the 621K, and the fourth one down, the 561 here. Um, and so it splits off down here as well. So third and fourth. So I've put in 333 volts. So I've put a line across there, and then where it intersects with the particular characteristic curve for that uh, MOV, then we drop that down, and uh, we're down here at uh, 10 to the minus 6. So that's one microamp there. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this is 10 microamps here. So one microamp here, um, this one where it intersects, that red dot there, is three microamps, and that one is five microamps. So let's just take the worst case of uh, five microamps here. Using Ohm's law, that's going to be uh, 200 mega ohms equivalent resistance at a thousand volts, because remember, we're 333 volts per uh, MOV, so um, yeah, 200 meg, that's pretty high. So if you put 200 meg across here in parallel with effectively in parallel with your 10 meg uh, input impedance through here down to ground, then basically that should not have much impact at all. And you can go through the calculations, uh, 200 meg in parallel with uh, 10 meg is about 9.5 meg. So what happens in practice? Well, we don't actually know. That's why we're going to measure it. Let's go. So in theory, this is going to work. We should see uh, 10 mega ohms. So we're going to be able to uh, calculate that based on the current reading. So I've got the uh, current meter in series with uh, the 10 mega ohm input impedance on the new 2257 here. And you'll see I'm feeding in 100 volts. And at 100 volts, it's basically um, bang on there, right? We expect 10 microamps. That's uh, 10 mega ohms equivalent. Just use Ohm's law. So as we increase this voltage here up to 1,000, volts, we expect this to, um, this current leakage current to increase because it's the extra 
resistance of those effective resistance of those mobs in parallel with the 10 meg so it's dropping from 10 meg ohms so expect that to go up so let's actually see what happens i use my keith lee uh, high voltage uh, source here and uh here we go so i do know that uh, this uh, survives at a thousand volts. In fact, it survives on way over a thousand volts. I've tested it. So anyway, let's go up 200 volts. We're still looking at basically um, 10 mega ohms, right? It is not increasing. So 400 volts. Nope. <laughs> 499. There you go. Five, uh, 600 volts. 700 volts. We are not increasing. We are not increasing our current here. So that's interesting, isn't it? There you go. It's still effectively staying at 10 meg. You know, give or take the little bit of um, error in there. And whoa, 1,000 volts. There it is. So it's actually better than predicted. We predicted that it should drop to, uh, what is it, 9.5 meg, which should go up to like 105 or something uh, microamps on here, but it doesn't. It's still effectively 10 meg ohms input impedance. Now, I can go higher because this goes all the way to 11. Look at this. And look at that, even at 1100 volts, it's still effectively 10 mega ohms. I mean, I can put that into the confuser here and get the precise value, and that's 10.02 meg. <laughs> so, like, it's still, it's, it's as if those mobs aren't there. Now, I can actually go higher than that. I can actually take it to 1200 volts if I do the other dials. There you go, 1200 volts, still. No problem whatsoever. So it looks like Bryman have uh, chosen uh, these mobs and designed this um, so that leakage is not a problem, even at uh, 1200 volts. So yeah, there you go, tested. Oh, for those curious to see the AC, um, let's check it out because I've got a high voltage AC generator as well. 100 volts, there you go. And 200, won't go into the calculations, but knock yourself out. 300 volts, oops, it tripped there. It's a bit touchy, my uh, EDC high voltage reference standard. And there you go. So yeah, there you go. The current's a little bit higher than expected. It's interesting, 500 volts. It, it takes time to settle down here when I switch it. It's just the nature of the uh, response loop of the standard. 600 volts, still pretty 10 meg ohms ish isn't it? 700 volts. Whoa, there you go, 72 microamps, 800 volts. So 82.6 microamps, interesting, 900 volts. So yeah, now the leakage looks like it starts coming into play. But really, that's nothing to quibble about. So 1,000 volts AC, 104 microamps, or 103.6, there you go, 1,100 volts AC. For those curious, that is 9.63 meg. So, um, still, not a big deal at all. No worries. Catch you next time.